So today we're going to plunge into a bed of lavender um, and um, we're going to see where that takes us. The garden's absolutely full of it at the moment and there are bees out there making hay while the sun shines, so to speak. So I thought we'd make a start uh, on looking at the lavender and beginning to paint it. I'm going to return to this subject a couple of times, I expect over the next few weeks. But today, first of all, I wanted to look at the structure of the plant and paint um, a little design <clears throat> for you. So um, first of all, what I wanted to do was say the way I work when, um, if I'm doing a nature sketch, I tend to first of all have a go at drawing whatever it is. I think I know what it looks like from memory. So, I mean, I walk past this lavender every day and I don't really observe it. Um, so I sat down with a pencil and I kind of drew a sketch of, laven of lavender from, from memory. And then I thought, right, now I need to go and have a look and see what it really looks like. Um, so I went and I <clears throat> plucked a piece. Um, so there's one piece. And uh, I noticed a couple of things that the leaves are in pairs. So that was something I hadn't necessarily noticed. And uh, then that's a bud, that's just a bud that's opening, but when the flower opens up more, it's more like that. And then it also has all these kind of squiggly things at the bottom. And obviously the further down it goes, the woodier it gets. So it tends to turn into a bit of a shrub down the bottom. So lots of leaves at the bottom here, becoming fewer than a long stem and the flower on the top. So then I did a couple more sketches just to get the feel of that. So I recommend you do the same thing. And then I, I colored it in basically uh, using the three colors we're gonna to use today, which are quinacridone gold. This is a Schmincke Horridan quinacridone gold. I'm just going to top that up. Um, using these little dishes, you can sort of keep one side yellow and the other side green. So for the purposes of this, obviously, I'm going to be using the green side. And to turn this into green, I use cobalt blue. So I'll just top up the cobalt blue as well with a little bit more fresh paint. That's uh, Old Holland, that cobalt blue, but obviously everybody makes that. It's quite a nice one, though. It's quite strong. Um, and this is quinacridone purple. Also a Schmincke Horodam colour, nice and strong. And uh, that will make very nice um, lavender flowers <coughs> that you can mix that with a little bit of cobalt blue to soften that down a little bit. So, so there we are, there's those. And then I went outside into the garden again and sat down outside and I looked, I put my hat on and I looked because it's very bright. The sun's really strong. Actually, it's just gone in. Thank goodness for that. It's been very hot the last few days. Um, I looked at the bush of lavender and I realised, here we are, this is a piece of it. Tamsin said, oh, it needs pruning, I'll cut you a bit. So, so there we are. Can you smell it? It's amazing. It really smells very strong. I bet you can. I bet you can remember what that smells like. It's my favourite. Very romantic lavender, isn't it? I don't know why I have quite romantic memories attached to lavender from many, many years ago when romance was still in my life. Ah oh dear, those were the days. Days of wine and roses and passion and lavender. Anyway, let's get over that. Uh, so then I did a sketch of the bush of lavender there, like this. And um, I thought, yes, well, that'll make a nice composition for next time. So next week when we do a second lavender um, exploration. I'll do something like that. But for today, I'm going to my sketchbook and I'm just going to do some, um, not botanical, but sort of something in that ilk. And I'm going to do it with a pencil, if I can find one. There we go. Just quickly sharpen that. So, uh, looking at the flowers, looking at the flowers, first of all, I'm going to draw one little, little floret. 
which are, I don't know whether I can pull one of these off and, and see it. I should get a magnifying glass. But um, if you look uh, closely, if you can look closely enough, there's a kind of um, container and then the little, when it's fully open anyway, the petals kind of like this. It's very small. This is French, I believe this is French lavender. It would be, I suppose, considering I'm in France. There we are, so that's basically the shape of one of the little flowers when, when they're fully, when they're fully um, open. And to paint that, what we could do, we could wet that, and then we could just take a little bit of um, mauve, add a tiny bit of cobalt blue, to make it into more of a more of the right colour and then we could just drop that in and encourage that to blend maybe put a little bit more down there I'm working on sketch paper here this isn't watercolour paper and it's not stretched so who knows what's going to happen I won't use too much water And if this doesn't work, if this one, when this is dry, looks awful, I will have to um, switch to different paper, which I might do anyway. Let's see. So then, um, if we're going to draw a stem of lavender, we will draw a nice narrow stem like that and then the leaves are long and very narrow and the ends of them are bluntly pointed, so like that and they curve. So that's, that's how they go. And you might find, okay, we can make that a little bit longer and we can do another pair. And then quite a long way up, then we've got these little green pieces at the base and then the little flowers come out like that. Then there's usually a bit of a space and then the next one and then less of a space and then the next one and less of a space and so on until it kind of fades away into a point. And uh, you could take another stem out from the side here and you could do the same thing. So basically there are about eight of these little flowers which all go round the stem. each, uh, what do you call it, each wall. I've never known how to pronounce that word, whirl, whirl, wall. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to color that in with pencils. Just to try a different thing. So, So 
So that's that's a start. And then that was what was that that I used there? That was dark violet. And then we can come in with a nice apple green. This is so. Let's see how this works. And we change the colour to maybe. I'm not very experienced with um, watercolour pencils. This is grey green, which is a lovely soft grey green. That works really well. Look at that. So you can put that over the other green to get some variety. I'll use it in this one. That's nice, and then I'll use a lighter shade of lilac on this one. And the great thing about using pencils, coloured pencils, is that you can, you know, you can design your painting by using coloured pencils without having to worry too much about the paint. And if you, whoops, that's dry. If you want to make it a little bit darker, a little bit softer, just come in with your brush and the watercolour, the water to make watercolour. Yeah, I really rather like that. And the other thing also, of course, that we can do too, which I think would work well with this, is if I can just, oh, there it is, just locate my dry liner, not dry liner. Why do I always want to call them dry liners? It's not a dry liner. It's a pigment liner, there we go. So, yes. So the next one um, we're going to do, we'll, we will draw a line. For the stem. And then obviously, same kind of idea. The leaves. Coming up like that. And maybe bending over a little bit. And down this end, where we had the little spiky things, the leaves are shorter, like that. And they kind of stick out at all angles. And then obviously I've broken it off at the bottom there, so it's a bit like that. There's a vein down the center. And so we go up here, so we go up a little bit further and then The first whirl. There we are. See how that looks. So I'm going to go for this nice soft gray green just a hint of color and i always think of lavender as being a kind of very much at home in the places like the south of france uh, where you go used to be able to i don't know whether it's still like that down there used to go up into the mountains and walk and find just acres and acres of lovely lavender and sage and thyme and oh goodness knows what else, rosemary. So there is that, that's an idea. I quite like that, what do you think? Um, on this one down here that I did to start with, I'm just going to 
sharpen him up by coming in with my um, pen. That's better. When you use pen over watercolour, you don't have to follow the exact lines of the watercolour. That's better. And um, now, then we could do, well, we could, I tell you what, I think this probably would benefit from, so you might, you know, bear that in mind. If you do a drawing and you think, oh, it's not sharp enough, that's not got enough, uh, character you can go in with another medium you know that's where I think multimedia emerged you know oh my god I've done this terrible watercolor it's absolute rubbish what can I do well you can paint over it with acrylic or gouache or um, I don't know yeah something like that oh I tell you what we call that that multimedia so there you are I can do that and there's nothing quite so much fun as that. And then I'm going to do, uh, down here, I'm going to do a little posy. So we could imagine um, various stems and uh, they're gonna cross. Okay, so. And we will put a ribbon around that, a bow. And then up here, well, we have to have a couple of leaves. And then we will have, just because this is um, so many flowers, we'll do them in a slightly different way. Just check you can see what I'm doing. We'll do them like this. Just getting narrower at the top. Just scribbly. Like that. We'll do it coming down. And then we're going to rely on the on the colour to tell us that that's lavender. So we'll just drop that in like that. Various different heads of lavender there. And then the stems. So just make them fairly, put them in fairly strongly like that. Bit up there. And then we'll see what happens. Shall we just wet it a little bit? Where did my brush go? Oh, yeah. So to make it nice, I have one side with ink and one side without ink for example and then we could we could just make that nice bright and cheerful yellow ribbon obviously you can take your time and go into much more detail when you're painting this and if you want to drop in some watercolor having started off with you know a, um, pencil you can do that too so there's that that's another idea and so yeah so then I'm going to do just one more maybe um, perhaps one over here
just started reading a, a book on uh, sketching wildflowers that I have just found in my in my uh, um, I call I call it my library. Does that sound pretentious? Pretentious? What? Uh, it's the top part of my studio. I've got a bunch of IKEA bookshelves up there, and um, you know, a lifetime's collection of books. It takes up some space, and I forget what I've got. Um, anyway, I was up there looking for something else, and I came across a little book, only a small little book, um, by I don't know. Some of you English ladies might remember Roland Ro Roland Hilda who is, was a, I, I think he was probably the most um, influential artist on my development as a painter. He painted mostly in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, and he painted these, he was, he was originally American, Roland Hilda, or um, well, born in America, New York, I think. And, um, but he spent most of his life in England and he lived in Kent, where I grew up and lived. And he painted wonderful uh, Kentish countryside scenes, um, hop kilns and, oh, marvellous. He was an architect, I think, or architectural drawer artist. Very, very gifted. Learned a lot from him. He said, um, when you're doing a landscape, always remember to leave a space in the picture so that the eye can rest. Don't fill your painting with detail over the whole thing. It will never be satisfying. So leave an area where your eye can rest. Very, very wise words. Anyway, good old Roland, long gone, long gone, sadly. But he, he was married to an artist as well. His wife was called Edith. And she was a wildflower enthusiast. And they used to paint pictures together. They, he would do the background, because he was good at that. And she would do the flowers in the foreground, because she was good at that. And then they traveled around in America, exhibiting their beautiful works. And um, isn't that wonderful? So, yeah, amazing that he admitted that he, she used to knit and crochet as well. He used to draw pictures of her in ink. He used to draw pictures of her sitting by the fire, um, knitting jumpers for their children and things like that. Um, anyway, so as well as being a great artist, she was also a great knitter and yeah, so anyway, so she's got this little book and it's all about how to do wildflowers in a sketchbook. And I thought, marvellous, that's just what I need. I'm going to read that and that will remind me of everything I ever knew once. And then we'll be able to start our project together soon where we are going to do a weekly uh, sketch of something in my garden. In our garden. It's not just my garden. Uh, Right, I'm going to do another one of these up here. I'm going to start off with the... So um, I'm trying, I'm going to do two things. I need to buy a couple of, or one at least, um, little pocket sketchbooks, the small ones like these. I need to get one of those. This one is from Canada. This was a Robert Bateman. Um, this must go back a long time, I don't know. 1999, I think that says. I'll put a date on that. Lake Minnewanka, Stewart Canyon. Oh dear, I don't remember that. Oh yeah, 1999, Stewart Canyon. Um, what was I saying? Yes, I need to get a few of those and then I will put together and make a, um, a sketchbook for the paintings, the proper paintings that I do from the garden. But I'll, I want a little one as well, because I haven't, until recently, I've sort of given up carrying a sketchbook around with me all the time, but I think I'm going to start it again. 
so this one, I did that one in watercolour. And look, it's dried quite nicely, hasn't it? You wouldn't have thought that, would you? I always lose faith when I do these things. I look at it and I think to myself, oh, my God. And you want to play with it and fiddle with it and diddle with it and dab it and blot it and throw things at it and put salt on it and whatever. But probably the best thing to do is just to let it dry. I'm doing a commission at the moment and I feel that I felt that way about it. It's like, oh my God, what can I do with this? So I said, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to go to bed and in the morning the fairies will have been and they will have put it right. And lo and behold, this morning they had. Amazing. So that commission is going to be winging its way off to America before very long. So there we are, there's a little purple flower. There's the same thing in watercolour. They have their virtue, both of them. You could, if you wanted to, soften a little bit of that. I think that's nice. I really actually like these watercolours, don't you? Yes. Oh yes, that's really cute. Hmm. Okay, so there we are. All of that from this. And um, I'll put some links in the description below to some video that we took today of the lavender bush outside. Tamsin did that. And we've got another channel, actually, which um, we've had for ages, but we've never developed it at all. But we're going to start doing that soon. It's going to be called from the garden. At the moment it's called Awake in My Garden, but we're going to change the name. So we'll put the link in the description below. And if you pop over there and you want to see some pictures of lavender growing in our garden and uh, a few other things as well. We just took a little uh, bit of video today of the sheep coming down from the field into our back garden where they come for a snack at lunchtime sometimes. And um, that's quite comical actually. So if you're interested in that, you'll find that over there too. Um, so have fun, enjoy that. It's a gorgeous afternoon. I hope you're having a lovely one too. And thank you for being here. Hope you enjoyed that. And I'll see you again soon, probably tomorrow. Hope so. Bye everyone, bye bye.